It always seemed like in life there was just always something. And, and just candidly, you know, I just never really trusted God um, with everything. When we got married, we decided that tithing was going to be our main priority. After all that God's done, there's no way that we're going to start our marriage by robbing God. We were taught early on uh, coming to Fellowship Church how important the time was and how that that can really impact our lives. And it was an issue of the heart. It really solidified our relationship with God when we give Him our first. What people don't realize is that it is an invitation to a life that is so much richer and so much more dynamic and so much deeper than what they're experiencing now. And that's because you're not putting yourself first and you're not putting your needs first. You're doing what God has commanded you to do. You're walking in obedience. We give our, our, our tithe online. You know, every time it goes through, we get the little scripture. and It's just encouraging to just remember why we're giving. And It really is a, a worldwide church with worldwide reach. Where your heart is is where your money goes. You value uh, what you put your, your money into. The 10% has no question has blessed the other 90 percent we can't hold on to that 10 percent what, what, what are we going to do and buy some more shoes and we're talking about eternity right we've been completely astounded with god's faithfulness to us and uh, and i think you will too okay, it's amazing to see what god is doing as people step out of this area of their lives and trust god wanting god's best for every area of their life including the area of our finances. And what is a tithe is simply the first 10% of whatever we earn, whatever our income is, we bring that back into the house. And I love what one of the one of the guys says, said, hey, listen, it's not about money, it's about the heart, trusting God with everything and bringing that first 10% back into the house. If you're new today, there is no pressure to be a part of this time. Just sit back and relax. If this is your church, you'll see the ways on the screen right behind me of how you can prepare. The Blue Eye Partner envelope is on the back of the seat in front of you. My wife and I, we choose to participate online. Go to fellowshipchurch.com. It's a great option. Just easy. Takes all the guesswork out of it. But whenever you and I are part of the generosity, man, we're a part of all the life change that happens in and through this place. And something that we're excited about is the launch of the first of two brand new prison campuses that we are kicking off. And the first one we are launching on March the 19th at Hutchins Prison in South Dallas. And it is a just a phenomenal opportunity for our church to step into the lives of thousands of people. And more than that, we get to step into the lives of their families because we've created a way for them to log on and to join their families at this experience. We're taking Fellowship Church, all of Fellowship Church, to be a part of this brand new campus. The music, the energy, the life, the hospitality, the grace, the message of Jesus into this prison. And we are excited to see what God is going to do. So church, thank you for your generosity. I'm going to call our host forward now as we prepare to receive our offering. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that we get to be a part of incredible opportunities like this to see how God can use our generosity to change our lives. God, we pray that you continue to help us to reach every facet of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we continue the series Juice, and we're going to discover this, that in order to experience a juice life, you've got to put God first.
Welcome here. I am Ed, and I'm pastor of Fellowship Church. I want to welcome all of our different environments. I'm here right now in our beautiful Miami campus. So I want to do a big shout out to Grapevine and Fort Worth, South Lake, where else? Dallas. Alasco Ranch in beautiful East Texas, and also those who are watching online, great to have you here once again. Okay. I got this shirt the other day, this, this sort of a sweatshirt, workout shirt. I got it online. So basically what I did was I ordered it, and you know the drill. UPS delivered it. To me. It took a while, so we had this tracking number and we, we tracked it. I think it's pretty cool how when we order stuff, you can track, right, what you actually ordered and see when you're supposed to get it. And that's a that's a that's a great thing to do. So I thought I'd just kind of bring that up. <laughs> anybody ever ordered anything? I mean, like if you order something this week, maybe. From, from UPS, anybody? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, uh. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. I got, you know I do, I do. I said that because money, as you've heard it said, makes the world go round. And today I am talking about money, I'm talking about finances, but it does. You know, we, we use money, we have certain amounts of money, and we use it whether we're buying clothes or buying a car or buying a house or, or joining a gym, maybe we're into CrossFit, maybe we're into something else. So, so we use money, right, to live. It's a currency, it's our currency, money. You know, the Bible, because we are in church, talks a lot about currency. It talks a lot about money. It talks a lot about that. And the Bible talks about a different cycle. There's an economic cycle in the Bible. We know there's an economic cycle in our culture, but God is the one who invented economics. He's, he's the one that invented this stuff. And as I've studied the Bible, it, it, it freaks me out how much faith and finances are linked together. How much trust and treasure are like connected. It's like, man, that's that's amazing. So you have something intangible like faith and usually around faith, you'll have something tangible like money. God is the God of the intangible and the God of the tangible. And there's this economic cycle. My job during this series is to get as many of you as possible into God's economic cycle. I can't make you do it. I can't coerce you to do it. I cannot manipulate you to do it. I do, though, want you to get into it. I want you to be blessable. Isn't that cool? God, the God of the universe, that's right. He wants all of us to be in that blessed place. He wants us to be in the zone. The question I want to ask you is this. Are you blessable? Are you blessable? Well, again, obviously God wants to bless us. He's the blessor, and he gives us blessings. And I guess I could say that we are the blessees. Would that be right? He's the blessor, I'm the blessee. Yet, I can do things in my life that keep the blessings of God at bay. And one of the basic things I can do is I can use finances to keep God from blessing my life or... I can use finances as a means for God to bless my life. I'm not talking about playing a game with God. We can play some kind of game like, okay, God, I give you this and I get that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God wants to bless our lives. Finances is one of the first ways. It's one of the elementary ways. It's one of the foundational ways that God blesses us. Jesus said one day, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. For example, I like certain things, like fishing. I've invested over the years a good bit of money in fishing equipment. So you can look at them, what I have, my stuff, and go, wow, Ed likes fishing. My heart is about fishing. 
and you can look at my finances and say, wow, I spent some money on fishing. I've, I've done that my entire life. That's just kind of who I am. Well, the same is true in even a grander way when it comes to the things of God. God can look, and he does look, at your treasure, at my treasure, at your heart, and my heart, and he sees where this connection takes place. He wants the first portion, God does, of everything we've been blessed with. I'll say it again. Throughout Scripture, God desires, it's not because he needs it, but God desires the first portion of what we have been blessed with. We'll find out one day, and some of us have to wait until we, we pass away, but we'll find out one day that, that, that we don't own anything. We really don't. I don't own a thing. You don't own a thing. Basically, we're middle men. It's sort of like this sweatshirt. I'm sort of like, and you're sort of like the UPS guy or the UPS girl. God gives us gifts. And basically, he says, deliver them to where I tell you to deliver them. And believe me, God was the one who invented the tracking system. I'm just a middleman. I'm not an owner. And once I understood that, really 33 years ago is when I got that, my life forever changed. The freedom, the joy, that I was able and that I am able to walk in, not perfection, because I understood, well, I'm a manager of God's stuff. He's gotten it to me. Now he wants to get it through me to the only thing he's ever built, which is the church. Isn't that cool? So I'm just a I'm just a UPS guy. That's what I'm doing. I'm just delivering it. So my question is, I mean, as God tracks his blessings, where, where are they? Are you spending them on yourself? Have you unwrapped them? Are you wearing, are you wearing my sweater? <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? Now you might be going, wow, this guy could feel guilty. I'm, I'm not gonna guilt anybody into giving. That's not, that's not the deal. I do, though, want you to be in on the juice. The juice. People say, man, he has the 